Why do you want a light pickup truck? No fibbing, okay? I need you to be honest with yourself. Why do you want a light pickup truck? Because I think for many people, the sort of reasons for getting a light pickup truck are maybe not as glamorous as they might think they are. I know a lot of people, and I'm sure you do too, and maybe you're one of them, that their previous response would have been, well, why not? Because I want one, and I can accept that, because pickup trucks are cool. I mean, if we're being honest, that's why the suburbs are always filled with a whole bunch of Toyota Tacomas. There's tacos everywhere, because people just wanted one. But what I wanna know is, do you need one? Like, do you really need one? And if you do need one, do you need one for the reasons that you might think? And it's okay to re-examine stuff. And let me tell you why. I, I like doing this. I feel very privileged to be able to review cars and bring these videos to you. However, I also wanna maintain a sense of honesty and sort of with the humility to admit when maybe I made a mistake or maybe the market has changed or maybe the sort of environment has changed. And, a couple months ago, I said that this Nissan Frontier was the best all around light pickup truck. And I still believe that it is. But what I wanna know is, do you really need this Nissan Frontier? I mean, if you're like immediately saying yes, like you're like, Jax, yes, I need a light pickup truck. Then let me ask you why, what for? What do you need it for? Are you carrying stuff or are you carrying stuff? Or are you carrying stuff? Or do you just want it to carry stuff? There you go, light duty pickup truck at Sam's. Let's not pretend that this isn't what most light duty pickup trucks are gonna be used for, filling them with Sam's Club runs. Also, Sam's drops the price of gas by 20% and it goes nuts. Oh, oh, you think you might tow something? Okay, okay. What are you gonna tow? You might need to tow a jet ski. Do you even own a jet ski? Let's Let's say that you do. Let's say that you do need a light pickup truck to carry things and also tow the jet ski that you may or may not own. Do you need to tow more than 4,000 pounds? That might be a sticking point because even though this Frontier can tow more than 4,000 pounds, I'm wondering if you need to tow more than 4,000 pounds. And what if you say you wanna go off-roading? Well, what if you do wanna go off-roading? I'm at a public park in an area where they bring the horses and the horse trailers, and it's like sandy, you know? I mean, what are we talking about when we talk about off-roading? Do you wanna go hardcore off-roading? Or do you just wanna hop a curb at someone's little league games? Now, I know I'm giving you a healthy dose of honesty here. And the main reason, the main thesis of this video is I wanna take a look at something like this truly excellent Nissan Frontier and compare it to something like Ford's upstart Maverick. <laughs> See, here under the hood, you might be saying, well, this Nissan has this awesome 310 horsepower V6 engine, and the Maverick only has a turbo four, making 250 horsepower. However, if you look at the torque numbers, the Nissan's V6 makes 281 pound-feet of torque, while the Maverick's turbo four makes 277 pound-feet of torque, which is why the Nissan can tow like 6,000 pounds or 6,700 pounds or something like that, I'll put it on the screen, and the Maverick can tow up to 4,000 pounds, which is why I was kind of sticking on that point earlier. It's not a huge difference when you're talking about, you know, a couple items or a sort of construction trailer or like a lawn trailer or something like that. Now, if you have the aforementioned you know, jet skis or motorcycles or something, things start to change. But then I would question whether or not you would get more value out of buying like a used full-size pickup truck instead of sort of a light-duty pickup truck. Maybe that would actually suit your needs better if towing is a priority. You do get struts, though, to hold up the hood on the Frontier, which that's nice at this price point. Thanks, Nissan. Good for you. And you know, that power in the Nissan, it's running through a nine speed automatic. In the Maverick, it's running through a 10 speed automatic. And here in the bed, I mean, if you're looking at the bed and the way most people spec these trucks out, this comes with a nearly five foot bed. The Maverick has a nearly four and a half foot bed. So again, if you had a sort of quantitative reason to need a bed that's five feet, then sure, okay, go ahead, that makes sense. But 
isn't four and a half feet enough, or could it be enough? I would argue that for many of us, myself included, four and a half feet would probably satisfy most of my needs. Keep in mind that the bed capacity is also extremely similar in the Nissan Frontier and the Maverick. This Frontier can be loaded up with 1,600 pounds, and the Maverick can be loaded up with 1,500 pounds. And I would argue that if 100 pounds separates your sort of bed capacity needs, then maybe you should skip that extra sandwich. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm sort of kidding, but you get what I mean. A 100 pound difference is not a whole lot, really. I mean, that's like, you know, another bag of mulch or something. Like, what are you putting in the bed where 100 pounds is going to make or break it? Like, you need 100 extra pounds of gravel to redo your yard? You're not actually doing that. Stop kidding yourself. Now I'm gonna make you mad for a second here, and I fully admit that, because I'm gonna say that the Maverick is just as good off-road as this Nissan Frontier, and I know, immediately, you're like, that's the stupidest thing that you've ever said on this channel. Yes and no, let me qualify that for a second. The Maverick spec at a certain price is really no different than this two-wheel drive. Nissan Frontier Pro X. This is sort of the pretender frontier. And this frontier aspect cost $44,000. The Maverick I had a couple months ago was an all-wheel drive model fully loaded and it cost 37. So you were undercutting this model by thousands of dollars and getting more capability. And that wasn't even including the Maverick's FX4 off-road package, which does give it a little bit of extra capability. So you could spec that on the Maverick and still be thousands less than this two-wheel drive loaded Frontier. In order to get four-wheel drive on the Frontier, you gotta spend another like kind of $1,500, depending on how you configure the options. And when you look at the kind of like ride height of this Frontier, I wouldn't say the ground clearance is all that different. You might be like, well, this Frontier still has more ground clearance. Does it though? Does it really? And on road. The Maverick is superior by a mile. This is one of the Mavericks kind of ace in the hole, ace up the sleeve, ace in, I don't know, aces and cards are good, okay? We'll just go with that. This is one of the Mavericks high points, right? The driving experience, because it is based on a sort of small SUV kind of crossover chassis, and it drives better than any light pickup will drive. And that's not to say the Frontier doesn't drive well. The Frontier is great on road. In fact, I think it's one of the better handling and driving light pickup trucks. I would say that, in my opinion, the Canyon AT4 I had a while back is slightly superior, but the Frontier is also very good, but not even close to as good as the Maverick. Oh, and gas mileage, well, I think that's a no-brainer. The Maverick would win in that category as well. And that was considering I tested the Turbo EcoBoost engine. That's not even looking at the hybrid. And if I'm specking my own Maverick, full disclosure, and I live in Atlanta, Georgia, I'm specking a front-wheel drive loaded hybrid, which I did for the purposes of this comparison. And it came out to like 31 or something. So 31 thousand dollars and I can get this vehicle that will literally do everything that I could need it to do realistically because you might be like well you're not going off road jacks no I'm not I'm not I'm not going up to the mountains and going off road I might go on some gravel roads or something and the Maverick can handle that and front wheel drive can handle that I don't need crazy all wheel drive or TRD Pro Tacomas to handle that I'd like to but I'm trying to be realistic here and for 31 I can get this vehicle that would handle so much of my daily needs. The full-size pickup trucks dragged the market upwards. The prices of full-size trucks have ballooned into the stratosphere because they've become workhorses, but also status symbols. I'm literally standing here at the park and there's two full-size pickup trucks right over there with horse trailers attached. And those trucks are both 
mega loaded, awesome, big three American brands that probably cost upwards of 60, 70 grand at a minimum. Meanwhile, sort of light duty trucks like this Frontier have been largely unchanged. It's one of the reasons that this Frontier is so good compared to the competition because it was just recently redesigned. Let me put it into context for you. Um, the Ford Ranger is based on a platform that's been around since 2012. In that time, there have been three iterations of the F-150. If you look at the sort of Chevy Colorado and GMC Canyon, same thing. Look at the Toyota Tacoma. Well, not the same thing because the Toyota Tundra was just redesigned after infinity years of being on the market. But you get my point. These light duty pickup trucks just sort of make do for decades sometimes. I mean, the last GMC Canyon I had had a freaking key. Not a key as a backup, a key as the only way to start the vehicle. And it wasn't cheap. But then Ford comes along and they repurpose the Ford Escape, which I find to be so utterly boring and, and not very attractive either. And they repurpose that into the very excellent Ford Bronco Sport and Ford Maverick. And be honest, be honest, you thought they were both gonna suck. You thought they were gonna suck. I thought they were very likely going to suck and neither of them do. The Bronco Sport is a charming little SUV and I really like it. And the Maverick, the Maverick is like taking the world by storm. So let's talk about value real quick. This Nissan Frontier, as you see it here, this is the Pro 4X two-wheel drive model, costs about $44,000. The GMC Canyon AT4 that I had, that I like, there was a lot of good things to like about that truck, costs $47,000. And the Ford Ranger FX4 package, kind of loaded up similarly to these trucks, costs about $46,000. But the Ford Maverick with the EcoBoost four-cylinder engine that I had, costs just $37,000, which is a substantial savings. You're talking about a savings of almost $10,000 or more over some of its sort of light duty competitors. Oh, and if you want to get a fully stripped down Ford Maverick hybrid on those cute little steelies, that cost $21,500. Okay, $21,000. Let me say that again. That costs $21,500. Five. What other vehicle can you get? And I am seriously asking this question. Feel free to comment down below if you think you can think of one. What other vehicle can you get for 21.5 that could do all of the things that the Maverick Hybrid could do? Fuel economy, open bed, four doors. Like, I, I mean, I, I just can't even, I can't even wrap my head around it. What, what could you possibly offer? Like maybe like a Civic hatchback? No, not really. I mean, that little thing, is one of the most Swiss Army knife vehicles currently on sale. Let me leave you with some financial advice, which does that mean I need to add a disclaimer to this video? Like whenever someone says something about like stocks or crypto or something, I am not a financial planner and this is not actual financial advice. Do not heed this financial advice. I am not one of those people. Anyway, let's go on. Here's just a tip from Jax's automotive YouTube channel. Sometimes, Getting the most you can for your money in a financial environment such as the one that we're currently in might actually keep you safe in the long run. Let me sort of explain what I mean real quick. If you are stretching your dollar as far as it will go, rather than buying what you want and sort of throwing caution to the wind, if and when the market corrects and stabilizes and car values come down as supply increases, you might find yourself in a much more secure financial position with a vehicle that is meeting your needs rather than an overpriced vehicle that you bought simply because you wanted it. And at the end of the day, even though this Nissan Frontier is the best all around light pickup truck you can get, my advice would be take a good hard look in the mirror and then go buy the Ford Maverick. Guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you found some value in this comparison. I, this is the second time I've been with the Nissan Frontier and the whole time I was driving it, and I drove it a lot this week actually, I was just thinking about how darn good that little Ford Maverick is and how for me personally, and I suspect quite a few of you, that little Maverick will meet so many, if not all, of your truck 
needs. I know, I know that this Frontier looks the business, and if you got it in Pro 4X like this, it would really look the business. I also know that that tree frog decided to go ballistic right above my head. But look in the mirror, ask yourself, what do you really need, what do you really want, and then make your decision accordingly. For me, it would probably be the Ford Maverick, unless I become unbelievably rich off this YouTube channel. Note, that hasn't happened yet. Maybe it will by the time you watch the next video. All right, take care, ride safe, drive safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. The heck is this person doing in their Volvo?